Hey, Steve here, and welcome to this next episode of Processing Subscribers Images. So in this video, we're gonna look at an image sent to me by Ren Thielen, who has uh, taken this shot at sunset and basically asked me to see how we can look at getting more detail out of the foreground, because obviously it's just the one exposure at the moment and exposed for the highlights, it leaves a lot of the foreground quite dark. So um, yeah, I've just opened this up in Photoshop and it has loaded into the Camera Raw plugin first. And the first thing that I'm gonna do just before, uh, just before we actually get on with the main processing is just alter the white balance a little bit because even though it's got these beautiful warm colors, um, I think it's just a bit too warm in the sky. Uh, so I'm gonna see what changing to daylight white balance does for us. And yeah, we get the we get the blues back in the sky there, and the reds um, of the clouds are still there, a little bit fainter. So maybe uh, maybe we'll just manually adjust the temperature and put it up a little bit towards the warmer end, but without sending the sky like a purple when that red mixes in with the blue. Um, and then also just to see what we can do to recover the very brightest parts of uh, the sky in between here. I'll just see what just sliding the highlights slider down does for us. Mm, not really in love with that, so we'll probably leave it at that. And then we'll just have to kind of do what we can to fix these uh, overexposed bits in the middle in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna open the image now, and this is gonna open into Photoshop proper. And here we go. So in this demo, I'm gonna be using my new luminosity masking panel. Uh, this is mainly just because it allows me to show you uh, some sort of more advanced techniques a lot quicker than if uh, if I was going to use these techniques manually. So, you know, if you're not familiar with the panel yet, then it's basically designed to make luminosity masking a lot quicker and easier to perform. Uh, and this sort of goes for whether you're already an experienced luminosity masking user or if you have uh, yet to kind of master those techniques then it also kind of makes it easier to learn and to use um, you know without getting bogged down in all the complicated stuff so um, yeah Ren's main concern with this image uh, when he sent it to me in his notes uh, was you know mainly about the foreground and getting that uh, detail in there uh, without losing quality uh, because we're sort of having to brighten the foreground uh, you know quite significantly so um, I think the first thing that I'll do is just um, create a duplicate of this background layer and I'll use the panel here um, to create a plus two exposure um, layer so what I mean by that is it's basically going to duplicate the layer it's going to use the camera raw filter uh, plugin in Photoshop to increase the exposure by two and then it's going to warm the foreground a little bit and um, just you know, I'll probably turn that warmth down a little bit more um, because it's kind of gone a bit <laughs> too far there uh, and and that's it so basically it's just a shortcut for like a plus two on the exposure um, but then because it's a smart filter we can just come in and adjust these if we want uh, so what I'll do is just remove this extra warmth that the button uh, you know the tool in the panel has added so yeah we can keep the uh, brightness but just revert the warmth and so there we have this dark exposure the original now we've got the bright exposure and yeah so now we can just start to mask this in I can see in here there's a lot of shadows that are still quite dark uh, so we might even need to go a bit further um, on you know brightening those uh, just as a test I'm just going to see how far we can push the exposure to see how much detail we're going to uh, be able to get out of there so I'll just open up that camera raw filter plug in again and just zooming in here I'm just going to test by moving this up here how far we can go yeah and that really even pushing this up to five, we can see there's still a lot of black in there, which kind of unfortunately means that that detail is gone. There's not really much we can do to to recover what's not there. 
Uh, so, you know, we'll do what we can. But then again, when you think about the fact that this is a bright backlit scene, you know, it's going to make sense there's going to be black shadows anyway. So that's not going to be too much of an issue. Uh, so, all right, first thing we'll do is start masking some of this foreground in. So uh, I'll just invert the layer mask on this layer. So Command or Control I. I'm just going to zoom out because I prefer a bit of a further away view uh, when I'm working on images here. Um, and yeah, let's let's create a selection uh, that we can brush through to reveal the uh, foreground in these darkest parts. And the, hopefully the selection is going to protect the sky so that we're not brushing and brightening the sky with these brush strokes. So I'll use the preview on the luminosity panel. Uh, so I'm just going to turn that on and I'll create a selection here, pressing the one button on the shadow end. And that's going to create a preview, uh, which is showing the, the darkest areas in white. Now we probably can go a bit further into the shadows here because we've got quite a lot of the sky has also been selected here. So I'm going to press the three instead. So that'll be a slightly stronger shadow isolation. Uh, this normally takes a lot less time to perform. My computer is running really slow at the moment. I might have to close a few applications. Um, okay, but that will do there. So that's a nice isolation of the foreground and the tree, um, whilst most of the sky behind is uh, black or dark gray. So now I'm going to use this selection. So I'll click, well, used it. Uh, I'll click the Use Mask button, and that's going to load that preview into a selection. So I can now press Command H on the keyboard to hide the marching ants while the selection is still active and I'll just increase the brush size with a white brush and probably go down to 30 or 40 percent and I'm just going to start brushing into the foreground and into the trees so there we go probably you know if, uh, if I wasn't trying to record a video and it wasn't, you know, it didn't matter how long this was going to take. I'd probably be a bit more um, conscious of exactly what I'm brushing here. But, you know, this really is just to give you an idea. So there we've brightened that up. Probably see if I can just brighten up those top parts of the trees as well. And so that's, uh, that's done okay. I think we can probably improve it still uh, a little bit further. But... Yeah, this foreground is still quite warm and it kind of looks a little bit unnatural to me. So what I'm going to do is um, use a cooling filter to basically cool the, uh, the foreground there. So there's a couple of ways I can do that. Uh, the first thing that I'll try just to see if it works is uh, my um, cooling filter button in the panel here. Uh, you could use a curve adjustment and just drag the blue curve down to re uh, or push the blue curve up or remove red by pulling the red curve down. Uh, but I've got a quick uh, button here that can kind of create a cooling effect as well. Now, rather than have this apply to the entire image because I want the warmth still in the sky, first I will create a selection um, that isolates the shadows. So I'll just, I'll turn the preview off for this because I know that if I hit three, that's going to give me a decent selection on the shadows. And now with that selection still active, I'm going to hit the cool button. And when that's finished running, it's going to apply that cooling filter to just the foreground. So you notice there, just, you know, those warm colors in the foreground are just, uh, just being sort of uh, tamed a little bit whilst keeping most of uh, most of the warmth in the sky. So let's have a look. So this is the original, and now this is the brighter but slightly cooler foreground. Um, I think we can probably still brighten the shadows in here a little bit more. So um, you know, let's see what we can do there. Uh, again, let's use the uh, without the preview turned on. I'm just going to create another shadow selection. And this time in the light section of the panel, I'm just going to use the quick shortcut for a lightening curve. 
So that has added that mask, or that selection to the layer mask of the curve that is now brightening the image. So just seeing how far we can go there. Don't want to push it too far. So that's, yeah, that's okay. Um, now I think what I'll do is uh, see if we can sort of darken the sky a little bit and get some of those nice colors back in the sky that have gone a little bit washed out now. So I'll use a levels adjustment for that. And I'm not concerned with what's what this is going to do in the foreground. I'm just looking at the sky and seeing how this affects the sky. So just moving these uh, control points here on the levels adjustment. We can sort of darken the sky there and make those colors nice and rich and vibrant. Uh, so now with that, I can invert this layer mask to hide the layer. And now I need to create a selection that isolates the highlights. So let's use the preview this time on the panel. So preview turned on. Press the one on the highlights end. So that's probably going to be um, okay. So the trees and everything are a lot darker than the sky. So brushing through this selection, if I hit the use mask button now, brushing through this selection is with a white brush into the mask is going to allow me to um, to bring that sky through without affecting the trees too much. And so that's that. Now, one uh, other adjustment that I will make is a bit of a creative one. So I'm just going to create a curve adjustment. And it's going to darken the image. Now, I'm going to invert the mask. And just with the white brush still, I haven't got a selection active, but what I'm going to do is just use a freehand brush here to kind of sculpt the light in the foreground just to make this fence post uh, and this fence kind of stand out a little more just by darkening these edges. And maybe in between as well, just in between some of these posts. Now you can be a lot more accurate if you're doing an adjustment like this. Um, you know, I'm just sort of using this freehand brush quite loosely, um, but just zooming out and in again, I like to do this just to sort of get a distant view of the image to see how it kind of all fits together. Um, because, you know, when you're zoomed into 100%, sometimes there's something about the image or the composition you don't notice. Um, but this looks okay. So, you know, from here, you know, you could finish um, the image off by sort of continuing on through, uh, if you're familiar with my six step Photoshop workflow. Um, what the point at which we're up to now is probably the uh, contrast and color uh, stages. So next would be to increase, um, you know, increase detail and do things like dodging and burning to maybe bring these, this fence out a little bit and maybe, um, you know, do some further work on the sky to, um, you know, to bring the clouds out and make them more dramatic. But at the moment, this is, uh, you know, this is a good start. And because I want these videos to be pretty sort of short and just give a few tips uh, rather than being being uh, entire, you know, walkthroughs, uh, I'll probably finish this, uh, you know, finish this video here. Uh, maybe I will just have one last try at something just to see if uh, we can get something that looks, you know, acceptably uh, finished, I, should, <laughs> I guess I could say. Um, and that is just to, uh, just to see what kind of overall brightness or darkness uh, I would want the image to be if this was my own, um, you know, by the time we came to the end of the workflow. So, um, you know, there's a couple of things we can do here. I've got shortcuts to a curve adjustment here in the panel that you can use to, um, to darken the image just in one click. And then you can obviously just, um, 
you know you can just adjust the curve here or if I get rid of that there's it you know it just gives a slightly different darkening effect uh, but there's a button here called multiply which just um, you know it gives a slightly different effect sometimes it works better than the curve sometimes vice versa um, but this one uh, I think like let's just mask this out from the middle now again I'm not going to be super accurate with the brush strokes but I think you know just maybe brightening the middle a bit more and then leaving the edges a bit dark and the sky a little bit dark yeah I think this is probably somewhere in the region of how dark and bright I would want my finished result to be if I was going to continue on to the end of the workflow um, but hopefully just to get to this point you know showing you those uh, tips with um, how to mask uh, you know when you've got just that one dark layer to begin with you know how to actually bring as much detail out of the shadows as you can uh, using the camera raw filter and then using luminosity masks to blend that new layer in with the original background uh, you know hopefully this is still giving you some good tips that you can go away and use uh, here's before and here's after. Now, you know, if you want to use the panel to shortcut those uh, luminosity selections and the camera raw, um, you know, exposure duplicating uh, buttons and then some of the other light and color um, buttons down here, then there's, uh, you know, if you haven't got the panel yet, there's a button just below this video where you can go and get the panel. And um, yeah, otherwise you can, you know, if you're already familiar and know how to use all the various techniques uh, the long way around or the manual way I should say uh, which you know does take a bit longer than using the panel but you know it's totally doable without the panel uh, just you know the panel is there to make things easier so you know hopefully this has still been a valuable video for you um, just to show you the the steps and the process um, as long as you're familiar with the techniques and how to use them but like I said the panel is available um, below this video if you haven't got it yet and if you'd like to send me any images for an upcoming um, video then just go to luminositymasking.com and check out one of the uh, videos there the PSI videos the processing subscriber images videos and there'll be a link to a form where you can send me your raw files and let me know exactly what it is you need help with on your image but in the meantime I will um, yeah I'll sign this video off and say thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.